So, let's get started. Hey guys, it's Sunday, August 8th, and for the first time in a long time, it's actually raining up here. So we have a couple days of rain in the forecast, which is great. The garden could really use it, as well as the grass seed that I, uh, that I just planted in that field. The garden, despite the, uh, the low rainfall, is still doing pretty well. We've been harvesting uh, lettuce uh, and kale, Swiss chard, quite regularly. The tomatoes are starting to uh, ripen up. We have a few of them that are starting to turn red and uh, and yellow. Zucchini, we're uh, harvesting those as we need them. The broccolis are still uh, suffering from the uh, the heat wave that has been uh, has been present the uh, the majority of the summer. So we've been taking them as they uh, as they appear to be getting close to uh, to bolting. As a, they're not as large as uh, I've had previous years. Normally, uh, this kind of broccoli likes a cooler uh, summer, um, which is normally what we get. These kind of heat waves have been uh, have been well above average in terms of temperature, and we've been well below average in terms of uh, rainfall. And the broccoli definitely don't like that. The good thing is this bed will be cleared out in the next uh, probably week or two, which uh, will give the Strawberry runners, plenty of time to uh, take root before uh, before the winter comes. Blueberries are still producing. Uh, our beans are just starting to uh, to be ready for uh, a harvest. We've been picking those as well as the cucumelons. They've started uh, well. They've started growing and. Uh, and putting on whatever mass they can and we will be uh, we'll be harvesting those as well now today I figure I would uh, look a little more closely at probably the biggest producing uh, crop that we have in our garden and that is our squash plants uh, we do butternut squash spaghetti squash uh, and then zucchini and this year patty pans the other one we started this year was the mashed potato squash and this year everything seems to be producing a ton of uh, squash so looks like it's going to be a good year last year we had i think it was around 20 uh, butternut squash and we only had uh, about 10 spaghetti squash it's for some reason they they just didn't get moving until later on in the uh, in the season, so the harvest wasn't that great. This year we've increased the number of squash plants that we have in our garden. We have eight of each. We sacrificed a, a lot of peas. Um, again, there's only so much room for uh, for plants where uh, in this garden, so we uh, we reduced our peas, and in the place we've uh, we've put more squash pants so let's take a take a closer look at, uh, at what we have growing in terms of our squash so this year we've planted four zucchini plants three patty pans first year for the uh, the patty pans for us uh, we normally stake all these plants however we learned this year that the patty pans don't really like to be staked they, uh, there's just so much weight on the top of that plant that uh, they have a tendency of falling over. So I think next year we're just going to let them uh, let them grow uh, how they want to grow and not worry about staking them. Just let them, you know, grow along their side. As you can see, like uh, like zucchini plants, they produce loads of fruit. The zucchinis are, I believe they're payload. Nice plants. Uh, again, like all zucchini and squash, once they get rolling, once they take root in the, uh, in the soil, they just produce like crazy. Um, what, we have a, what we've been doing, because they produce so much, we end up uh, making uh, noodles out of them and then either usually freezing them they freeze really well the noodles will freeze um, yeah and uh, and last for quite a while 
it can be a little I mean with four plants even with four plants it can be a little overwhelming in the produce uh, in how much they produce again weed guard down doesn't seem to uh, seems to improve their uh, their ability to uh, to take root quickly uh, keeps the weeds down and holds a lot of moisture in the soil and then the other squash plant new for us this year is the mashed potato squash we haven't tried one yet don't know how they taste but they are non vining as you can see they're not vining out like the uh, well like you'll see on the spaghetti and butternut squash they just grow a nice compact plant and you can see down there on this plant one two three four five I see five but there could very well be more we have four of those plants in this bed so yeah we will uh, will if they taste good we will definitely be growing them again they these plants do seem to be uh, to producing quite a few of them now the vining squash plants the spaghetti and the butternut squash what we tend to do is plant them on the perimeter of these beds and then we will wind them into our plastic fencing and surprisingly enough the plastic fencing seems to support the uh, the weight of the uh, the squash that the uh, the plant produce without any trouble this year we've also built a squash ladder just to keep the fruit off of the ground um, never really had trouble we've had a couple uh, squash that have had uh, some kind of bug that uh, seems to be uh, in the uh, in the ground that that got into one of them one or two of them last year so this year again just tied them up let the uh, let the fruit hang down and it works quite well pests don't really bother we have a lot of deer that come through here they really don't uh, don't go after the mature plants lots of spikes on these uh, on the uh, on the stems uh, and I'm assuming the deer really don't uh, don't like that. We have had a groundhog this year as well, and he did a little bit of damage. What they tend to do is eat the uh, is eat the growing tips. Uh, they'll just chew on that for uh, for fun, I guess. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's quite annoying, but not the end of the plant. The plant will just grow <laughs> grow in another direction. But if you are gonna you know work on protecting something the uh, the growing tips are what you want to uh, watch out for because the rest of the plant seems to be uh, fairly good at defending itself now last year we didn't get very many spaghetti squash I think we only ended up with eight uh, eight squash wasn't uh, wasn't a very good harvest this year we have uh, doubled the number of plants and it looks like we have quite a number here we grow I don't remember what the variety it is but it essentially grows very very large squash uh, and the nice thing about these uh, these kind of plants you can harvest them early which we don't do we just let them uh, ripen on the uh, on the vine and when the plant dies back then we go around and collect them all and in the other bed Again, normally we would have had peas here, but this year we have elected to use this space for butternut squash. Again, made a bit of a squash ladder to keep them up and off the ground. It's a little delayed this year. We can never seem to get both of the <laughs> spaghetti squash and the butternut squash to do well in the same year. I don't know what it is always either one or the other uh, but you can see a lot of fruit set and let's see if I can find a growing tip there's one that the groundhog took care of so that was uh, yeah it was kind of annoying but again lots of fruit set um, we are kind of getting getting close to the end of the season so hopefully there's enough time for those uh, for all that fruit set to uh, to grow and uh, and ripen up, but we will see uh, 
we will see how it goes. Again, just like with the spaghetti squash, we grow the variety that produces big, big squash. Uh, if you're looking for something that, uh, if you're looking for smaller size uh, squash, you just get a variety that grows the uh, the smaller ones. But we we tend to use it. We you know make soup and and uh, and uh, you know cook it in the oven, roast it. It's uh, it's very good. It has uh, it has a lot of uses and it freezes it freezes quite well. So we have no problem uh, uh, using up our uh, our squash. And lastly, as you can see behind me, you do need quite a bit of room for these plants to uh, to grow out. We don't follow the recommended planting distance, otherwise we just wouldn't get the uh, the number of plants in here. They seem to be, the squash plants that is, seem to be pretty good at finding um, any available sunlight. They can kind of compete amongst themselves and they do a good job of collecting uh, every little bit of sunshine they can, uh, they can find. So... I don't really worry too much. They all seem to uh, seem to be doing quite well, even though they're planted quite closely together. The butternuts and the spaghetti squash do keep very well. We've had we've harvested. Uh, we typically harvest in September, and we've had spaghetti squash and butternut squash well into the new year. I think last year we used our last one in. February so they keep very well in uh, in a cold room out of sunlight uh, in uh, in a relatively cool temperature and these are one of our most valuable crops uh, even though they seem to be relatively inexpensive um, in the off season these uh, they can be around you know two dollars 250 a pound for us and when each one of these squash that uh, that we harvest usually come in around 10 pounds. I think the largest one last year was uh, was 12 pounds. That's quite a bit. Uh, I think last year the total squash harvest was around 140 pounds, um, which is quite, uh, it's kind of hard to uh, to believe, but yeah, the weights on these uh, on these squash add up really quick and translate into, uh, uh, yeah, quite a, uh, quite a valuable crop. All right, guys, that's it for this week. Next week, we will be probably continuing the harvest. And if the broccoli plants continue to bolt at the rate they're bolting, uh, it'll probably be time to start uh, clearing out that bed and transplanting some strawberry runners in the hopes of a good strawberry harvest next year. So I'll see you guys later.